Live from the studios of Coefficient Media in Jackson, Michigan, today's show is brought to you by Mosey Pro Online Backup, baby. This is the Android App Show, episode number 84. Oh. This week, uh, we're going to be reviewing kind of a, a trancy app. Uh, it's kind of cool. Uh, but we're also going to have our uh, weekly discussion on fragmentation and consistency in Android. So it's actually going to be better than you think. Ooh, it's trippy. So it's a little bit better than the nerdiness that it sounds like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Welcome to the Android App Show. <laughs> is bright and rich with promise for the millions of telephone users like yourselves whose quick acceptance and ready use of each improvement in telephone service has helped make possible an endless chain of accomplishments. What will it be this time? Welcome to the show, everyone. Yes, 84 episodes in now. Yeah? We still got it, Dave. Will you still be loving me? (laughs) I don't know. I don't know the. Uh, I don't know if I ever loved you, Dave. I don't want to break your heart, so I'll do it quickly. That's okay, Lane. <laughs> yeah, so eighty-four episodes, pretty good, I think. Yeah. Uh, we have some some good discussions that we got going on today uh, that we want to talk about some fragmentation and quote unquote fragmentation. Um, but unquote. I think we have an advertiser we want to. To touch on this week, a sponsor we for the show. We want to touch on them. Somebody keeping these lights on, letting us uh, talk to. to you. Yeah. Although, even though we uh, moved to LEDs, they still take some power to run. They do. <laughs> and uh, this week's sponsor, drum roll please, is Mosey Pro. You might have heard already. You have heard already a couple times, but we wanted to bring it to you again. Mosey Pro is. Um, when you're running a successful business, uh, there are many things that you need to take take into account, and data backup or making sure that your information is backed up is very important. Because with most of the, the companies that are out there nowadays, we're living in a knowledge based economy, and that is your business. Like you got to back your business up, or you're going down the tubes. Yeah, because. You know, a lot of people don't think about this, but computers, servers, external hard drives, even tape backups are vulnerable are vulnerable to failure uh, and data loss. Unfortunately, over time, uh, and in the U.S. alone, just just in our country, there are over 140,000 drives that fail every single week. And yeah. I believe that there's a lot of bad hard drives out there. Mm-hmm. I know we go through them all the time here, uh, but 50% of businesses that find themselves without data. Uh, management for 10 days or more file for bankruptcy. So, like, I mean, there are natural disasters and stuff like that that you have to think about that could happen. And if you lose all of your stuff, that's not good. That is so not good. And uh, the reason that we like Mosey so much and we don't mind talking about him is because businesses of all sizes and consumers already use Mosey to back up everything from emails contacts and important documents to family pictures and music so it's it's automatic and it just works yeah a good example is jeremy he uh he runs a landscape architect this is somebody who uses mosey now but before he would have to back up all of his architecture stuff and those are pretty big files to a hard drive and you, you have to sit down every time and make sure those are all backed up and it's it's just hard to do. So now he uses Mosey and it's simplified everything and it was easy to set up. That that is a big deal for business. I mean, especially if you're doing it on your own. You just have to make it easy. Yeah, and there's nothing easier than this because there's no contracts to sign. Mm-hmm. Uh it's affordable and you don't have to buy any special hardware to put on your network. Again, it just works. It does. And if your business is not backed up to Mosey M- Mosey Pro, then you really have to ask yourself, is your business backed up at all? Do you have what it takes to make it through the hard times? Well, uh, I don't think you do if you don't have Mosey. Uh, Mm -hmm. So give our friends a call. Uh, They've been doing this a long time. They run the most secure and the most trusted online backup service. Right now, uh, through the offer that we have going with them, you can save 15% by using the code PODCAST15. That's PODCAST15 
Uh, that's the numbers one and five. All is one word phrase or whatever. No spaces. And Dave, how can they get to a place to use that code? Well, um, they can uh, either call in using a phone number, 877-996-9776. Phone numbers are cool. Or you can go to moseypro.com, and that's M-O-Z-Y pro.com. And the phone number one more time, 877 877- Six six nine six seven seven six, and they will get you in there. But don't forget podcast fifteen. You'll see it on the screen here. It'll flash up for a second. Oh, did you get that podcast fifteen? <laughs> it's good. It's also in the show notes. You can check it out on our website. We have a link that you can click. Big time. So, all right. So let's get that? into the weekly discussion. We are going to talk about fragmentation, folks. Mm, fragments. So what fragmentation means and I used to love that what show. the big deal is. Fragmentation Rock? Uh, I think you're thinking of uh, Google Rock. No. Fraggle Rock? There you go. <laughs> uh, so fragmentation. Basically, there's three different kinds of fragmentation. Okay. So whenever you hear people complain about it, these people that are all you know smart on the blogs and stuff on the internet, uh, the first kind is probably what you hear the most about, and that is version fragmentation, yeah. uh, which is devices that get left behind. Uh, they don't have the most updated version of Android. They're never going to get it from the official source. So, no device left behind. Yeah, the uh, consumers it's are kind of hosed. Uh, this one I consider to be actually pretty bad because a lot of times you get uh, security updates yeah. that are pretty relevant, and they don't go through. Mm-hmm. Uh, so in my opinion, this is the worst kind of uh, fragmentation that's out there uh, because just of the security input, you know, that and, implications. And you also get like uh, a lot of these are based on like what the carriers want to push out to the device. And exactly. after, after a while, it does not become, uh, there's no incentive for them to push out these updates other than being It's a nice way generous. to put it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're not going to send an update to a two year old phone if they don't absolutely have to. Yeah. Because that person who has a two-year-old phone isn't in. I mean, they they need an they need another incentive to put purchase another phone. Yeah, and what Apple's uh, Apple's still updating the three GS, right? Yeah, yeah, they are. Mm-hmm. So, and that's over two years old. Yeah. So good on them for that. Uh, but yeah, again, this is the most insidious kind because really, you buy a phone and you get Android. Uh, this kind of deal with the smartphone, you know idea of a smartphone rather the modern one that you know apple's kind of pioneered is that you get the latest and greatest one as long as your phone can run it yeah and people are just being left behind so that's the first kind of fragmentation you should uh be looking out for uh the second kind is uh the split between vanilla android and uh some of these uh other variations on it and we'll kind of lump a couple things together, like HTC's Sense, Samsung's TouchWiz, and uh, Amazon's whatever they call Kindle. their stuff. Yeah, the Kindle interface that they have. Uh, so Google releases a version of Android that, you know, they have a certain interface uh, for just some of the simple things, like the taskbar on the top is a certain color. You know, and different people can change that. The home screen will be different. Uh, just some of the menus and everything. Uh, but that's also considered fragmentation um, because it, Android doesn't look the same to consumers depending on what the hardware manufacturer is. And you might not even know that it's running Android if you're using something like a Kindle. So uh, you kind of get a, a breakup like that. Uh, this is a, a little bit less dangerous, I guess. I mean, this kind of impedes updates to be released uh, because every time there's an update, everybody that then has made a change to the software has to kind of incorporate that into their version of Android. Uh, So whenever Google releases, again, security updates for Android in the two point whatever branch, which is what the Kindle is based off of, Mm -hmm. uh, then Amazon has to process that, put it into their version of Android and release it. Um, People have been kind of saying that this is what's going to lead to uh, the biggest problems, um, but I think that it, it, this is kind of like a, it's not that big of a deal, because uh, as long as the apps run on the different platforms, you know, whether it's been customized for whomever uh, or by whoever, then it's going to be fine, you know, as long as you can still download the Android app and run it on your device, 
then there's no problems. Um, so I don't know what what do you think about the where where do you fall down on on customizations? Are you pro or con? Well, like customizations as in the interface customizations. Yeah. Um, I think it's cool in 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 a certain way, but I come from the mindset of like Apple's kind of. You've got a very strong base structure for how the operating system kind of functions. And yeah. all, all the native apps that come with the device kind of have that same thing. And it really it really drives me crazy when apps break those conventional methods. So, like, I love how Android is kind of, with that new push they have, and kind of unifying some of those interface functions. I love how they're doing that. Um, and I hate how Apple is breaking those conventions right now. Like, a good example, like, just to see how bad this is, like, the um, the new, uh, what is it, the contact stuff in the iPad is, yeah. is crazy, crazy bad. I mean, it's like, a, it's like a Rolodex kind of thing. Yikes. And you use, like, markers and, like, it, like, it... <sighs> just doesn't know. behave like an iPad app should, right? It doesn't behave like any of the other apps. So, like, it's a completely different use mm. environment. So, like, I understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to give you a, a, a marker for how this app should work. But in a day and age that we are right now, putting limitations on interfaces like that... Um, the physical limitations and like putting this whole like crazy concept behind it of like making an actual address book just just, does 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 not seem right see i'm getting worked up here yeah so they they went at it more you're saying that they the mistake is they tried to make it more like an address book instead of more like an ipad app right so like the ipad has a good um like design framework built behind it or a style guide yeah. for how apps should work and in a lot of cases they're individually breaking that style guide for specific things and it just it, do, it doesn't seem like a wise idea well and that brings me to the last uh version of fragmentation which is again the stylized apps mm-hmm. so android is really kind of more loose on this front like you said yeah uh it's been with ios from the very beginning they have all these ui elements built into the api yeah. so that when you build an app you just use the default pieces mm-hmm. that apple gives you and android's had that as well but it's always been kind of ugly so people were pushed right to create their own interfaces mm-hmm. uh, but now google's come out with like a design guideline for mm-hmm. apps uh, so that they're saying like the colors and all these different uh, right. ways to function. Like their new uh, apps do a lot of swiping left and right. Mm-hmm. So like the old paradigm was you had yeah, tabs and you would touch that. a tab. I don't know about that. And then like now there's still tabs up there, but you okay. swipe between the lists. Yeah. So and then the the tab list is swipeable, and you can that's cool. You can scroll through them. But yeah, I think that I think this is kind of cool, but there's already a whole thing built up around, you know, designing your own UI and mm-hmm. uh the Android developers depending less on the built in UI right. you know, that comes with Android. So and again this this uh guideline stuff is only for the new version of Android, which runs on like one huh. percent of phones right now. Right. And I mean I like <clears throat> I like when it- developers become inventive and try and come up with new ways to interface with information or data or apps or whatever. But I think that there should be this base framework for how people interact. It's like when you get in a car, there's a steering wheel. It's not the best way to maybe (laughs) drive a car, but it's there. But we've done it for so long that everybody pretty much. (laughs) And like, with the with the way that these mobile platforms are changing so fast, there needs to be some kind of form of recognition for users. So when they jump into an app, they can easily understand it. Because, I mean, this is just in its infancy right now. I mean, if we still had cars coming around with like a steering wheel or like a joystick in your car, that would be weird. Yeah, it would be. 
but again, the other interesting thing is this is all completely voluntary. So even though they're putting this, you know, this yeah. style guideline out, there's nothing, there's no carrot or stick that says to use it. Right. Well, I mean, the carrot is that hopefully the more people that use it, the easier it will be for adoption of these apps and that'll kind of unify the platform. Exactly. But if you have carriers and uh, really manufacturers customizing Android, then yeah. what standard are you even standardizing on? <laughs> you know, the Google standard. Yeah, exactly. But if you're, if you're making an app that follows the Google standard, that's great mm-hmm. for phones that aren't personalized with Google's touch or whatever. Right. Um, but if you're making them for Samsung phones, which run touch Wiz, and are the most popular selling Android phones out there, yeah. then you're going to be operating underneath the, the Google paradigm for apps inside the Samsung paradigm. And then it's still, yeah. it's still not going to look uniform. It's not going to look, so you might as well just design the app the way you want it wow. because you know, all the different Android platforms look different anyway. True, but then then you're only dealing with two, two modes instead of a hundred modes of of apps. Yeah, but you've got Samsung's customization, and then HTC's spin on Android looks totally mm-hmm. different. And then if you want to submit it to the Amazon App Store, while well, you're in this, the Amazon. I don't know if you've used a Kindle yet, a Kindle Fire. Yeah, I mean it's, it's crazy. It's totally different. The home screen is all. Yeah, you know, it's dumb. It, it just feels like you're inside the purchasing portion. You know what I mean? That's yeah, that's exactly that's, how what they want it to feel like. It feels like you're inside the iTunes store, like from from your perspective, right. the whole time you're using the device. Yeah. So, well, I don't know. We'll see what comes out of this. I just don't think it's going to go anywhere, and people. <laughs> start drumming up the fragmentation stuff every time you get a little story like this. So I just wanted to have a little discussion on this, try and clear up what, what fragment, what fragmentation means even. So that's not even clear most of the time. Well, thanks Lane. That was, I appreciated that. And (laughs) now we'll move on to something that is awesome. We've got an app, don't we? Yes. We have one app to review this week. This is insane. It's going to blow your mind. Yeah, this came as a recommendation from uh, Brad. You know, uh, oh, really? he used to be on the show. Yeah, cool. oh, Brad comes at me with uh, games and stuff every now and then, and yeah. I'm playing another one that he really likes too. He's got me hooked on it. Um, but I'm going to review this one today. It's called Osmos HD, and it's two ninety nine on the Android market. Uh, this is one that is actually kind of a. It's not a port. It's uh, one that was on the iPad and then is now on Android. So, in this music, this is the cool stuff right here. Trippy, man. Yeah, and they, they do a lot of... The music is integrated into the game in a very cool way. Uh, so, let's go through some of the things we have on here for, on the screen. Uh, there's a settings menu where you can set your effects volume and the music volume. Uh, we'll leave the anonymous stats on. Uh, you have different uh, Black hole achievements. Sun. Yeah, nice. I know. I kind of want to get that. Collapse the system in Solar Three by feeding oh, the attractor. No. Oh no way! I wonder how you do that. Huh. You have to just skim it and give it some of your yeah. mass, and then go pick up more. All right. Uh, let's see. This looks like amoebas. This kind of explains the controls, uh, but I'm not going to get into that. I'll show you in the game. Got some credits here. You can see where all this music is coming from. Yeah, I totally thought that this was. Um, and like, here's links for the artist pages on Amazon. Okay, that's cool. I totally thought this was Brian Eno music. It sounds exactly <laughs> like it. So if you go through the Odyssey, Odyssey is kind of like a campaign mode, and Ooh. you start out. It's just the basics to become the biggest. So you pinch, <laughs> oh, you yeah. zoom out, kind of shows you your universe. You spread and you'll go in. Uh, everything kind of is just floating, moving around. Yeah. Uh, but you touch to one side of your guy, like on the bright blue ball. You're the blue one. And okay. it kind of propels you in the opposite direction. It's like a little, like a little squirt. Yeah. It's you know, the what, what law of physics is that? For every action, there's the Newton's equal and opposite reaction. Law. Is that Newton's second law of? I don't know. I'm losing geek cred by not knowing. 
for each action or what, oh, what is it? I don't know. Is it for every it's action there's an equal and opposite reaction, right? Yeah. So you the the point of this game is to float around and absorb balls that are smaller than you. An object in motion will stay in motion unless acted upon Act by an equal and opposite reaction. No. So. But unless act that's a different law and that's it's unless acted law. upon by an outside force. That's what it is. Which I believe that this follows. So there we go. Now I'm the the biggest. You the biggest. So yo. You press with two fingers to go on to the next level. You so big. Become the biggest again, with different circumstances. See, like on this one, they're moving faster. Oh. As you go on, it'll be you know more is it, complicated. Is stuff it good to on. move faster? Uh, you know, it just things get combined. See, so the longer you wait, the bigger these uh, other balls oh, get. Frightening. Yeah. You gotta eat them one later. Yeah. If you wait around too long. So then, if you want to pause or do anything else, you touch the finger. Yeah, you touch the screen with three fingers, mm -hmm. and it'll pop up a, a menu here where you can restart, cool. go to a different level. I'm gonna Ooh. exit to the menu and go to arcade. As you beat levels, you unlock levels in the arcade here so that you can just pop in and play whatever you want. So the first one is the, uh, the one I was just showing you. Uh, the second one is called Antimatter. Yes. Antimatter. So it's very similar, but now you have these green balls floating around that are antimatter and everything up until this point when you run into it you absorb it or it absorbs you if you run into antimatter though it annihilates some of your uh, mass you know it just takes away based on how big the the antimatter is so a smaller antimatter ball will take away less than a collision with a very large antimatter ball what if you hit the red thing it will absorb you red means it's bigger than you oh and then you die yep Oops. See, matter plus antimatter equals annihilation. Yes. So we'll go back to the level. This one is called impasse. Uh, this Becomes it works. Huge. It works all on the same uh, oh my theory, but you can't go oh anywhere. My gosh. So instead of ejecting mass to travel somewhere, we're gonna keep ejecting mass back and forth off of these and off of this one and then let them kind of drift. Now, you might think, oh, this is going to take forever. What the heck's going on? Well, if you hold your finger down on the screen and slide it to the left, you'll slow down time. You'll Whoa. hear the music drop. But if you do the same thing and slide it to the right, music picks up. See, I had to slide it back a little bit to bounce off that. So when you sped up time, you see those things are drifting away from me just shooting them. Uh-huh. Because uh, it's pretty much a weightless environment. So then I'll launch a couple of these and get out over here and absorb on this one huge. now that I can get to it. Don't get too huge. There you go. Yes. You are the hugest. I haven't won yet, though. Oh. Do you have to absorb everything? There we go. Level complete. Oh. Oh, so you have to be huger than the huge. You have yeah, to be. and they get more and more complex. So, oh, dear. So you have to push around oh, a gosh. bunch of stuff. You know, oh, it's it's pretty cool. Gosh. That's right. Man. All right, so let's move on to the next one, Repulsor. Uh, now we have, you know, it wants us to absorb the Repulsor, so we have to chase them around. Um, but it's it's basically just a ball that rejects the other balls. It pushes it away. And so everything on here kind of has a uh, a relationship with it. See, when I chase it... Oh, but now it's red. It's bigger than me. But you have to get a good amount of mass bigger than the repulsor so that you can then go after it with some pretty good speed because uh, it's almost like a magnetic push. So then this level is called Sentient. Uh, it has a living organism that's scooting around here with you, huh. and you have to absorb it. Uh, it's trying to escape you. Yeah, while it's green, it's bigger than you, and it will kill you if it absorbs Whoa. you. Uh, but it'll turn, I believe, red. 
So it's like the opposite of the bubbles. You know, green is fine, but I know it turns blue when you get bigger than it. Let's see, he's gonna try and get me. Don't let him get you. Let's go down here. There he goes. That's the color I want. So now let's chase him down. Is he gonna try and escape? Yeah, there is no escape. Yes. I win. <laughs> you were using up. You were mass ejecting quite a bit there. Yeah. But see, it gets more complicated. And now does he take the, the red ones? Better. Is he taking up the red ones? Uh, if he hits a red one, he will lose. He'll lose know. mass. Yeah. And this one's called solar. And there's a reason why. It's because it, there's a uh, an attractor instead of a repulsor. And it kind of serves as like a, as a sun or as a black hole. And you can go into orbit around it. So it's the same game. You eject mass in the opposite direction you want to go. Uh, but on the solar one, whenever you eject mass, it changes your orbit path. So you can go you can go out of orbit and run into items that are bigger than you. Um, but you can also, and not only can you go out of orbit, um, but once you're out, you can, you know, kind of steer it back into orbit. But it's pretty cool if you uh, let this run for a while. It kind of looks like a, you know, a planet accretion disk where things just eventually become larger and larger in mass. You see when they turn the brighter orange or red, uh, that means that there's just been a collision and uh, they'll, they'll just keep getting bigger and bigger and then you'll just, you'll see kind of planets form around and they'll be uh, huh. orbiting the sun. That's cool. Uh, this one's called Warped Chaos. There's just, there's tons of games on this. I see I mean, that. it's worth the two ninety nine. It really is. Uh, this just has tons of attractors and it just makes it very, <laughs> very entertaining to go through because uh, like I'll be going through and then look, you can see kind of a, uh, a line right there. What is that line doing? It, it tells you where you're going, but it it only shows up when you're around attractors like this because it's to show, you know, a calculation of uh, your, your orbit. Uh, but when there's so many attractors like like this level, I mean, orbit's kind of a loose term. Right, they keep Because you'll go around one, and then you'll go around another, and mm, yeah. It's constantly changing. And let's see, the last, absolute last. Epi- it's like the episodes. Apollo mission where they have to slingshot around the moon to gain speed. Yeah, well, then you'll like this one. Yes! So, like, this one is set up with one in the middle and then three orbiting it. And you have to absorb the targets, which are the small blue things orbiting those. So let me speed this up here. So you talk about slingshotting around the moon. Mm-hmm. I go in orbit around this guy. And then as I'm coming around the peak there, I kind of have to break orbit. Oh, a not like bit. that. Ooh, you broke it a little too much. <laughs> Absorb the first target. Whoa, you totally broke orbit. What happened? Can you get back into an orbit? Yeah. Oh, that's not good, yo. I gotta slow down. Oh, oh. slow down too much. Then you gotta go in orbit around the next guy. You were going the wrong way, again. Lane. You were going the wrong way, also. Oh, there's no such thing as wrong way. Mm, I beg to differ. You in just fall towards it and you miss it. That's called system. orbit. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, the toilet only flushes one way. Yeah, that's a myth. That's how the toilets are built. <laughs> anyway. It's called the Coriolis effect, actually. Yes. And its effect on actual things is so small. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's a good meme. It, it persists because people like it. Yeah. Like the Simpsons episode where they mm-hmm. had the toilet that the would flush the opposite way. Yeah. So you wouldn't feel homesick. Good stuff. So this is called Osmos HD. Uh, it was kind of a long app review, but that's why we only did one today. Because there's so many different aspects of this. Uh, the arcade on this just totally rocks. Uh, 299 
it's well worth the money. It's well <laughs> so worth good. it. Uh, there's a trial version on on the market to try mm-hmm. out. Now, do they but, have a yeah. different version for Android phones and tablets? No, no, it's just, just one. one. And it's compatible with Honeycomb. You see that it... Uh, but you do have to have a phone that can register multiple touch points. So some of them it will artificially block because, like, uh, because maybe the software didn't originally support that many touch points or whatever but the phone was technically capable of doing it and blah 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 so there you go because it has that three finger thing going on yeah, like and it. some phones only recognize two I like that speeding up and slowing down time oh it's yeah it's just like wow well the dude. music it's a I'm trip so trippy man and it does mess with you if you're wearing headphones when you do it it can make you feel a little dizzy or like off to one side it's like when the music beats. goes up yeah so check it out. Man. Well, I think that's everything we had for this week, right? That is. Uh, if you want to check out some more of this, we have uh, some redesign work going on on the website right now. What, what? Started working on it today. Uh, just spent a couple hours on it. Got some more work to do, but check us out, theandroidappshow.com. Uh, it should work beautifully on your computer to mobile device. Yeah, and everything in between. Yeah, And if you want uh, some more in-between stuff, you can check us out on Twitter. That is at Android App Show on Twitter. And uh, that's where we post stuff when we're not doing the show. We just post it right up on there. Big and, time. Uh, it's good stuff. I like it. I like it a lot. And uh, we post all of our full episodes and some experimental shorter content on YouTube.com slash The Android App Show. Uh, so check us out there and click on subscribe because you know you want to. Yeah, you do. You want to. And if you liked this show, we do other shows also like the Android Tech Show and the iPad Show. Uh, but you can also find more cool shows like this on the Blueberry Podcast Network. That's Blueberry without the E's dot com. You know, pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Fun. Independent content. Good stuff. Well, this was a fun episode. Uh, yeah. On the Android Tech Show, speaking of the devil, we have a review of the Motorola Zyboard. Oh, the what? Yes, that's right. X-Y-B-O-A-R-D. That's a dumb name. Overseas, it's called the uh, Zoom, two. Zoom 2 Media Edition. What so, if you're curious about this bad boy, 4G LTE, <clears throat> pretty sexy for a Motorola thing. Yeah. Uh, definitely check out the Android Tech Show. Cool stuff. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll be back later with some more apps. Bye. Done. That was a great show. I gotta get the hard drive.